Hey everyone, I'm Matt. Welcome back to another video. Today we are taking a look at the brand new 2020 Fleetwood Pacero. This is model 35QS. This is a great entry level class A diesel pusher uh, that has four slide outs and it looks really nice. We are going to take a look at the outside features first, then the inside features, then I'm going to give you the three things I love about this motorhome and the three things I dislike about it. We're starting in three, two, one. Hey everyone again, my name is Matt from Matt's RV Reviews. It's the world's only channel that gives you a true unbiased review about everything when it comes to RVs. So if you find reviews like this useful, consider subscribing. And again, today we are looking at the Pacero model 35QS. Now that's the model number, but the actual tip to tip length is 37 feet, seven inches. And this is on a custom Freightliner chassis, a straight rail, not a raised rail, because it's an entry level diesel. And it has a 340 horsepower Cummings engine with a 2500 Allison transmission. Let's get started up front. So new for 2020, it's this new headlight look. I like the way it looks. I like how Fleetwood added these LED lights here, just like an Audi. And then new, it does have the technology package. This is like lane assist and um, the traffic detention. Uh, what's that called, Will? A brake controller? Or, not brake I controller. mean, not brake controller. Traffic uh, thing. To let you know when a car's in front of you. Coming around the side, you have black mirrors here, and both mirrors have cameras in them, so you can have cameras in your left and right side in reverse. You do have frameless windows throughout the whole RV, which is very nice. Up front, you have a little bit of storage right here. Now, a lot of people don't like entry-level diesels because they're entry-level, but what's a really nice feature about the entry-level is the mid-entry door. Uh, most diesel pushers you get this front bus style door and not everybody likes that and it's a real advantage with having that overhead bunk on the inside. You do have the nice big 22.5 inch tires. Right here is where you fill up your fuel. Uh, it's a 100 gallon fuel capacity. You can also get to that on the other side. Also, I'll have all the specifications, tank sizes, lengths, weight down in the description below. Oh, and I almost forgot. The MSRP on this motorhome is $283,000, but we all know we don't pay MSRP, so I'll have a really good sale price down in the description below as well. Right here is your propane tank. Look at that, Will. That's a weird looking propane tank. You have a nice power awning with LED lights. Here's some storage here. And if you look at through the storage, it's storage like a Class A gas motorhome. It's not that nice pass-through storage. You can get the pass-through storage on the Pacero LXE, but it's also, you know, $30,000 more. Now right there, you do have some pass-through storage, but it's, you know, the rails obstructing the view. Right here, you have a nice Samsung outside television with sound bar, really nice. Coming down, right here is your fresh water tank with low point valves right there for you to winterize. This, I wonder what this is. Propane disconnect maybe? Oh, uh, probably not. This might be your fresh water fill. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's for you to fill that portable water tank. I like how it's locked so if you piss off your neighbor, they won't pour bleach in your fresh water tank. Not that anybody would do that. Over here you have a little bit more storage and some electronics right there. Here's your water heater. It is a six gallon DSI gas electric water heater. And then right here, cause you never have enough storage, is a little bit more storage. Coming around the back, you can see the engine compartment area. Oh, that sucks. No ladder for the back, so I can't show you guys the roof. But at the same time, I won't almost fall off the roof like the Ace 30.2, so that's good. No ladder for the back. I don't know if it's an option or not. I don't know why they do that. But it is a TPO roof with two air conditioning units and it is solar ready. Right here, you do have a hitch. Now this is a 10,000 pound hitch, but this motorhome cannot tow 10,000 pounds. The GCWR is 33,000 pounds on this coach. 
and the unit weight is 28,000 pounds fully loaded. So it's safely to say you can tow at least five, but you can tow six to 7,000 pounds depending on how you load it. But make sure you weigh your motorhome first before you wanna to tow something that heavy. Over here is like a little side airflow for your engine. Nice, check this out. Even though it's an entry level motorhome, it still comes with a surge guard standard, not an option. And you have all your batteries right here, your magnum inverter and everything. Over here, here's where you fill up your DEF. You have your gauges right here. Also, freight liner, you'll see on the dashboard, the new dashboard looks awesome by the way. Uh, they'll tell you a meter when you have to refill your DEF. And then this is your 50 amp power port. And these are, I didn't mention, all aluminum slam latch doors. Very nice. Over here is the sanitation station. You have your outdoor shower. You have your city hookup, black tank flush to help clean your black tank. And this is your water filtration system. And it even comes with a sewer hose. Crap sewer hose. Oh, pun intended. <laughs> Crap and crappy. Those, listen, you get those hoses, throw them away. All you're going to do is get poop on your feet. Just buy the uh, Rhino, what's it called? The Rhino what? Yeah, I don't Rhino know. Flex? Yeah. I'll put an affiliate link in the description below. Help us buy lunch this week. Over here is the other side of that passenger storage. More storage. Oh, look at this. Okay. So it has tile floors inside. And they even give you spare tiles. Because it's a motorhome. It's not if the tiles break, it's when. So it's nice to have replacements. A little bit more storage there. Again, the other side of that. And then over here you have a little bit more storage, some of your electronical components. But I wouldn't store anything here because you don't want to mess with that stuff there. And then let's check out this generator. Hey Will, can you see the bugs on your screen? No. <clears throat> Probably can though. The bugs do not come. We do not charge extra for the bugs. <laughs> now this is really crappy. Because of that hole right there. What? Oh. Oh, well, maybe not. Yeah, it does. Oh. Okay, so that's pretty crappy. I don't like that. I think I found my first dislike. Yeah, one. definitely. <laughs> but uh, here's your generator. It is a Cummings Onan 6000 generator. That's good. Uh, and it's right here, but that's kind of that's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. But don't worry. The outside of this RV looks great, but it looks even better on the inside. Let's go take a look. Oh, and before we go inside, uh, this has the new 2020 Freightliner chassis with the new gauges and everything. It's all LED screen. It looks really awesome. Let's go inside. I can't wait to show it to you. So first, get a pan shot of right there, please. This is what the RV looks like when the slide out's closed. I'm not a huge fan of this because it is very tight to walk back. Doable but you totally have to do that sideways walk and it is not the best for this. But it is an entry level motorhome at a great price point and when this thing slid out, it looks awesome. But before we do, check this out. <clears throat> Watch this, make sure you get this right, right up here. You ready? Yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Look at that. Look at these gauges. Oh, nice. Nice loud horn. Horns. Nice loud horns. <laughs> so check this out. There's so many cool new features about this. First, I talked about the mobile eye. I was talking about like a collision avoidance. I was wrong. Sorry about that. As you can see, it started raining, so I did some research. It's not collision avoidance, but what it is is lane assist right here. So that mobile eye will let you know if you're swaying out of your lane. Also, 
the new transmission is actually right here. If you want to show this, Will. So normally the transmission was right here and you go like this. Now you just twist that and now we're in drive. You got your parking brake under here. Now watch this mirror right here when I get really close to this RV. Oh, oh shit. Hang on. Okay. Bam, you see that? You see that there? That tells you just like, you know, Mercedes-Benz when you're getting too close to another vehicle. And then when you wanna shift in reverse, you just do it that way. I think that's plenty of space. Cool. Then you put it back in neutral and you pull your parking brake. Really nice feature. Let's get, oh, let's take a look at the rest of this, the cockpit area. I like it, feels like you're flying a jet. And you do have a, a great, um, the Palazzo, they stopped putting the telescoping um, thing steering here, wheel. steering wheel, and it was only going like this in the Palazzo. I was really disappointed. And the Palazzo took out the air horn. This is nice because it goes up, down, in and out to make it a real comfortable driving experience. And then this is your passenger seat, right? Both seats swivel, and it is, you're able to go in, out, up, down, left, right, raise it up, all those good features. Let's get these slide outs out. Mm -hmm. See the slide out by? Oh, there it is. That's fancy too. Yeah, it is. Great. And while I'm extending out this RV, if you could do me a huge favor. At the end of this video, or now, hit that like button, hit the thumbs up button in this video, and leave a comment down in the comments below. Let me know the three things you like about this motorhome, and let me know the three things you don't like about this motorhome, because the more thumbs up I get in comments, the more YouTube likes to promote this video. Four slide outs on this bad boy. Cool, so let's check out this living area. This is nice. Again, when you have the mid-entry door, you're able to get the bunk over the cab. Now, a lot of manufacturers who are having that bus style door are still putting the bunk over the cab, but the whole problem is when that bunks down, it makes it really hard to get in and out of the motorhome, especially in the case of emergency. With the mid-entry door, you don't have that problem. And you have storage above, which is very fancy. Coming in this living room, you have two sofas. This sofa over here is the recliner sofa. Very nice. I love the um, light up here, and I love the artwork. It's very art deco. And then over here, you do have a sofa. It does not make a bed, I don't think. And you have a TV lift right up here. Oh, that bunk over the cab does hold 500 pounds. Oh, LG TV, getting fancy. Over here in the dinette area, you have the table and chairs. It does come with two foldable chairs if you have guests. And this table, let's see, it does not extend. So it just kind of stays there. And you have your table and chairs here. Also, you have these MCD daytime shades and privacy shades, which is very nice. And what I'm a fan of is that window and the slide out right there just to give it some nice airflow. Also, there is cup holders there. Oh wow, look, that's a lot of storage for all your remotes and everything. Hidden hinged cabinetry, hide walls, very nice. Over here in the kitchen area, you have a nice solid Corian countertop material, nice stainless steel sink, two bowls. 
you have a residential faucet, you have a tower of power, and some nice cabinetry here. Induction cooktop, two burners, with a microwave convection oven. Very, very nice. Over here, you have a Whirlpool refrigerator. Look how big this fridge is. Now this is a huge plus. This is a nice big fridge, and it's actually a really nice countertop. Also, I really like the color choice, what they did with this uh, dark cherry wood with the uh, light cabinetry. Over here in the bathroom, uh, bathroom ceiling. you got solid surface there. Nice porcelain toilet here, you know, making it work. And then you have a decent sized shower. I've seen a lot bigger showers and diesel pushers, but with this motor home, you can only get so much stuff in so much space. Finishing up, we'll finish up, what's this? Okay, that's at least nice. We'll finish up in the bedroom area here. You have TV with storage behind it. That's a great amount of storage. You have a Whirlpool washer and dryer. Nice. I kind of like how they're separate. You know, they make it work. You can't really stab them. Here's your spare chairs and everything. And then this is your king bed. And it is a tilted view king bed. So you have to tilt it up when you get the slide outs in. And when you're done, you just push the bed and it tilts down. Also, what's nice here is, push it down for you. What's nice here, you have power on the side with cell phone chargers built in. I'll show you in a second. Nice. See the power right there? Has its USB ports as well. Great, so that's the 2020 Fleetwood Pacero 35QS. It's now time for me to give you the three things I love about this motorhome and the three things I dislike about it. What should I do first, Will? Three things you like. Perfect. Now before I do, I just want to give a special subscriber shout out to Ashley Stewart from California. She's a 10 or 11 year old who gave me a call and just said she loved the show. We love you back, don't we, Will? Yep. And, and we sent something in the mail today, and she should be getting it soon. Great. First thing I really love about this motorhome is right here. Just this. Just the new, the new cockpit, the new Freightliner chassis. I mean, this looks absolutely incredible, and I really love this. This is a huge improvement. Boom. It's great. Second thing I really love about this motorhome is these chairs. These are very comfortable chairs. I like, it's not directly across from the TV, but it is a good angle when the slide outs are open and it looks really nice. And then the third thing I really like about this motorhome is the appliances. LG, Whirlpool fridge, Whirlpool washer dryer. They're using these name brand appliances, which is really important not important, but it's a nice touch to it. It's not Sam Sui or, you know, whatever part of whatever part. You know, it's nice name brand stuff. Now it's time. Oh, I like that. That light too. That's just really nice. Now it's time for the three things I don't like about this motorhome. First, over here. I don't like the shower area. It's not that it's a bad size shower. It's for, you know, 283 MSRP, so in the low 200s or in the high 100s, to have a shower like that, I'm not a huge fan of. Number two, I personally don't like the Tilt-A-View King beds, because the way me and my family camp, my wife sometimes like to, likes to lay in the bed while we're driving down the road, but at the same time, you can't get a bedroom this spacious if you don't have that Tilt-A-View bed. So that's number two, and you, oh, forgot to mention, centralized dirt devil vacuum right there. 
And the final thing I don't like is outside. This generator compartment door, it's really crappy and they did such a good job on this motorhome and it's already 283,000 MSRP. What's another 500 bucks to make it a nice or what's another thousand bucks to put it on a slide out tray? But that's it, that wraps up the video. Do me a huge favor, again, if you haven't already, smash that thumbs up button, hit subscribe so you get all my videos. If you have any questions about this RV or any other RVs, send me an email, it's mattsrvreviews at gmail.com, or you can call me or text me, just like Ashley did, 301-906-0962. If you're looking at Class 8 diesel pushers and you wanna see uh, other brands that compete with the Pace Arrow, I'll have a video library down in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Hit subscribe, and I'll see you next time.